So I was 23 years of age, guys, and uh, I met this uh, girl uh, that I really liked. Uh, I was with a friend. I, I, was, I was actually with Floyd. And I was, I was 23 years of age. Uh, I wasn't too shy off being a virgin. I think I'd, I'd been with one girl uh, before that, right? A, a girl that actually, you know, approached me and came to me. So she chose me and I, and I did like her. So I was still really shy. I had terrible social anxiety. I had obviously terrible relationship anxiety and I was really frightened of intimacy of a woman, especially in the bedroom. That absolutely terrified me. So I met this girl. I'm not going to say her name just in case, but she was, a, she was a lovely girl. She was my dream type of girl, beautiful, attractive, uh, very educated, very intelligent. And she took a liking to me. I spoke to her. Uh, I think I got her phone number. And I think I, see, I seen her friend. She had a male friend. I didn't hear from her. And I bumped into him and I, I told him to pass a message over and, and tell her that I liked her. And, and he, he did me a favor. So I got a message from her out of the blue. I, was, I remember I was so happy. I was so excited. I was telling Floyd. And eventually we arranged to meet a date. I still remember this guy, this was a long time ago, right? I'm 38 now, it's 23, but I remember I was so frightened on the day of the date because this was a time where I didn't have much experience and I had very bad anxiety. I was, I was absolutely, the truth is I was petrified of attractive women and I was, I was petrified of any woman that liked me and where I liked them because I was always so afraid of being hurt and I was so afraid of a woman not giving me uh, the love and affection and you know not being attracted to me and I was also really afraid of them seeing me anxious and, and embarrassed and awkward I was afraid of my anxiety spilling out I didn't want them to know that I had this anxiety disorder so I remember the day of the date I, I couldn't I couldn't stop thinking about the date you know as it was getting closer to the date I was doing my hair putting my clothes on I was trying to go over in my head about how to you know what I was going to talk about and these were the days where I didn't even know, I didn't really know how to lead and be a man and go on a date. I remember meeting her in central London. I did have the common sense to pick a place, we went Covent Garden. And I remember when I met her, I remember straight away realizing that she's a lot more confident than me. Like I couldn't hardly speak. I tried to hide, like I tried to hide my shoes. I tried not to look her in the eye too much because I had a real problem looking women in the eye. A lot of my clients have this problem, I understand. It's one, of the, it's one of the symptoms of bad anxiety where you struggle to look people in the eye, especially women, because you don't want people to see you nervous and you don't want to get awkward. So I couldn't really look her in the eye. I couldn't really be that vocal. I couldn't express my personality because of the nerves. I was trying to calm the nerves down. We was on the way to the venue. And I remember she was very lovely, very, um, you know, just very caring and stuff. And I think I did tell her that I'm a bit nervous and she was like, that's, that's fine, that's okay, right? She gave me the benefit of the doubt. That's decent, that's a nice woman. So we got into the, um, the, the, the bar in uh, Covent Garden, I think it was Roadhouse. And I just remember feeling really uncomfortable and awkward. I was kind of relieved that I was on a date. So anyway, date didn't go too bad. Uh, she did like me. Uh, she did want to see me again. I don't know if it was the same day or the second date, basically, I think it, it was my birthday actually, um, and she knew about it. So basically, I was naive at the time. She invited me back to her place, and um, you know, she wanted she wanted to make love with me, right? Which is a great thing. Obviously, I was young. I, of course, I wanted that, but I was so afraid. I was so scared of intimacy. I was so scared of taking my clothes off. One of my deepest insecurities was the fear of not being able to get an erection and, and obviously please a woman. And I was very very scared of sex. At that, at that time, I had very little experience. Um, obviously, I was, I was nervous socially anyway, you know, with clothes on. For me, having my clothes off was just terrifying, especially a woman that's beautiful, that I'm attracted to, that wants to, you know, make love of me and potentially be my girlfriend. So I remember thinking, I don't want to lose her. So I, was, I, I couldn't believe how much she liked me at the time because obviously I had such low self-esteem. There was part of me thinking, like, this is too good to be true. So obviously, when, when I went back to her place, you know, we, I think we had a drink, uh, I met a friend, a friend went, and when it came to, you know, later in the evening, she wanted me, I couldn't do it. Like I tried, but I couldn't get an erection. I, and I remember her obviously getting frustrated with me and I tried to calm the nerves, I couldn't. It, it, it wouldn't work, wouldn't cooperate. I was so nervous here, my whole body seized up. So obviously, you know, to be fair to her, she probably thought this guy's a bit strange because I couldn't tell her I've got all these issues. Obviously, I, I, just, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't do it. It wasn't possible at that time. So went on a few more dates of her. She gave me a chance, tried to make love again. I couldn't do it again. I couldn't get an erection. I couldn't perform. I, I didn't really know how to, how to please a woman at that time, if I'm being honest, right? 
So I remember eventually, and I don't blame her at the time, she gave me a phone call and spoke to me and said, look, I, I, you know, basically she said to me that um, she's got to dump me. Like she can't see us being anything more than friends. She basically wants a, a, rela a relationship. I wanted it. I, of course I wanted to make love to her. I'm a, I'm a straight guy, a man, I love women. But I, I couldn't get past the anxieties. And I think she got to a point where she couldn't deal with that anymore. And, I, and I, now I don't blame her. But at the time I took it really bad. I felt so hurt. I tried to speak to her, try to get her to change her mind. I tried to beg her back and she, she wouldn't change her mind. She was still nice, she'll still be friends, but she decided to move on. And I remember it, it crushed me at that time. I remember going home on the bus and just thinking like my heart sank. I genuinely thought my life's over. I can't, I can't live without this woman. That, that's where I was back then. But the truth be known, although that was a, a very horrible experience, you know, whether that woman knew it or not, she changed my life because that put me on the journey of trying to figure out like what's going on with me? Like why can't I um, get an erection? Why can't I make love to a woman have a, and have a relationship? I wanted to go out of her. So it wasn't just like she just wanted to sleep with me. I, 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 I could feel myself falling. I loved her, I fell in love with her. Obviously I was young and I know she was really into me. So it really crushed me. And obviously it was a, it was a double blow because it's like, this girl, this woman was crazy about me. I'm crazy about her. She's like beautiful. And now she's dumped me. She doesn't love me anymore. She's fallen out of love. She doesn't feel the same way. And on top of that, I've just embarrassed myself. I'm a disgrace because I couldn't get an erection and please her. And, and, and I remember thinking like, am I always going to be like this? Like how, like what's going on? Of course, at that time, I didn't know what I knew now. I thought something's wrong with me. This isn't normal. Men, this doesn't happen to other men. Of course, I don't realize this happens to all guys at some point. I took it personal, like everything in my life at that time. So it crushed me, it really did. I, I, my self-esteem was already low when I met her, but after that, my self-esteem went down the toilet. So I was absolutely petrified of speaking to women after that. I was so afraid of reliving that experience of being, you know, of getting close to someone loving them, them loving me, and then them changing their mind and dumping me. And I was also afraid of not getting erection. So later on, happened again. I had a lot of problems with um, um, getting an erection. I couldn't get in it. Of course I could get an erection when a woman wasn't there and I'd be excited, I'm human. But in the situation, the shame, the anxiety, and the fear of making mistakes and all that kind of stuff and being self-conscious and not feeling comfortable in my own skin and not being comfortable with my own body. And not, I wasn't comfortable with a woman's body, even though I love women, I'm attracted, of course. I, I didn't know what to do. So it happened quite a few times after, but this is really what changed my life. It was so painful, it was so humiliating and shameful, that's how I felt, that I couldn't go back. I don't know, in my mind, somewhere in my mind, logic told me, you just gotta keep working through it. Thank God, eventually, after it happened with several women, I had the courage to say to a woman, and she'd understood, look, I, I don't take it the wrong way, but I like you and stuff, but I might not be able to, I might not be able to sleep with you, because I, I can't always get an erection, I get very nervous. She was so understanding, that made me feel a bit better. So it took me many, many, it took a long time for me to open up to a woman and say, look, I, I've got bad anxiety, I get really, you may see me as confident now, because I can speak and, and laugh, because I'm kind of comfortable with you, it's socially, but when it comes to you know getting naked and getting and making love and, and doing adult things, I, I probably won't be able to do it. So you've got to be patient. Or it's going to take me a long time. I'm, I have to, and that was what I realised that I, this problem I had, this anxiety was I had to learn to relax, and accept whatever was going to happen. And that took time. And eventually, I did get better. And it, honesty is the best policy. I've always found that no matter how hard it is. There's such a relief and obviously communicating. So I learned from that first crushing blow, the power of communication. And obviously if I'd have communicated a bit more at that time, who knows, it could have been different, but it changed my life nonetheless, because it made me look at myself. It made me open up about my issues, tell friends, work on it. And, and that's how I really got past these things. Um, so, you know, the origin of my anxiety, if you want to call it approach anxiety, social shyness, it came from obviously trauma when I was younger, you know, you know, being laughed at, not, not just like rejection by girls, but you know, being bullied by guys, school teachers putting me, it's a combination of many things that, that break you down and make you scared. And, make, and most of it for me, I realized was shame. I had shame around all these areas. I, I was ashamed of myself.
So obviously, when I'd get in these situations, I would have a voice or a feeling that I don't deserve this woman. Like, it's too good to be true. She, why would she like me? So that, I went through all those things. So as terrible as it sounds, it changed my life. And again, I'm, I'm trying my hardest not to show off. I don't like showing off, especially in this area. But obviously I was very successful after, right? And that's not my claim to fame, as most of you know. I'm not, at this age now, I'm not interested in how many women I can sleep with. But I'm just telling you my story, my journey. It was really, wasn't really a journey about, I want to sleep with loads of women. It was a journey that I want to overcome my anxiety. I want to be normal. I want to have a relationship with a woman. I want to be able to make love like normal people do. I want to be able to have connection. And I wasn't able to do those things because my anxiety got in the way. I couldn't make love. I couldn't really open up. I couldn't show all my personality. I was always on, I was always on eggshells. And it was, it was horrible, especially when, um, you know, where generally in my life I've been quite blessed. Most of the women I've met have been lovely. And they've all been potential great girlfriends. So I really had to go, I guess it's just what I had to go through. Um, and over time I got more relaxed, I got more confident. You know, and then I was able to obviously to make love and then obviously I got over that fear and I was you know, a lot better at communicating. So my confidence comes from being crushed, it comes from being insecure initially. But the main key factor I want to share in this video is I didn't do instinctively what most people do and that's give up. If I'd have gave up, I wouldn't have even become a teacher. So I want to explain something as well. This anxiety that I had with women and, and sex and, and, and getting an erection and, and closeness and I'm not just not just sex intimacy in you know opening up having being caring hugging talking eye contact these issues stem from issues that were a lot deeper that were in all areas of my life the fear of traveling the fear of meeting new people the fear of job interviews the fear of speaking the, all of it uh, you know the fear of trying new food I, I had such bad anxiety disorders and that was just one of the areas where it showed up because my, my, my deep-rooted anxiety was obviously being rejected, not being loved, uh, being shamed, being embarrassed. It was all around that. So any area in my life which could potentially cause that, I would feel fear, I'd shut down. So it was my body's way of um, trying to cope, trying to survive. And obviously after I started to realize that it's not death if you can't get an erection, you're not gonna die. You can, you can get an erection eventually. It's not like I can't get an erection at a time. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake, none of us are perfect, men are not perfect, women are not perfect. So it's, I had to sort of unburden myself out of this prison and just realise that, you know, w women are quite understanding if you communicate and if they like you and you can overcome these issues by communicating and working through them and learning to relax and that's what I did. And it was a process obviously, so that's why I, I can talk about these things where probably most people would get embarrassed or they'd get awkward. I was the same, so I, I, I can understand why people would feel embarrassed. It is a sensitive subject. But listen, I'm a huge believer in honesty. If you're not honest about it, how can you improve it? There's millions of men all around the world right now. There's, there's marriages that are not working. There's men that maybe have never had any intimacy or they're having problems. So I hope, well, I don't hope, I know my story, as it's done for many years, will change people's lives. It will help men and women. So, um, you know, the two ways I overcome this problem was communicating being vulnerable and honest that I had this problem and then working through it. Now I don't have this problem anymore. <laughs> Probably the opposite. So I had to really, and I, I realized this was something that a lot of people are not willing to do in all areas of life. And I had it, especially with anxiety. Generally as human beings, until we change our mindset and we experience success and the benefits of doing the things I'm saying, and I'm not just talking about with making love, relationships and intimacy, I'm talking about in all areas. We don't like going through that process of feeling ashamed and embarrassed and uncomfortable in order to feel the opposite way, which is com confident, comfortable and secure. So it's no different. Me doing this video now, I know making a video and speaking is different to intimacy love, but it's the same process in that years ago, when I first started doing YouTube videos, the same thing happened. The anxiety came, I froze. I, started, I couldn't do the video, I couldn't speak like I can speak now. But because I've done thousands of 10 years of doing YouTube videos, of speaking, of practicing, of not caring if I make mistakes, picking it up, continuing going, I'm able to do it. So it's exposure therapy, anyone can do it. If I can do it, trust me, anyone can do it. My issues are very bad. So my confidence comes from working through the issues, communicating, facing them, going through the shame, the embarrassment, and then getting to the, the part where we all want to get to, where you're not ashamed, you're proud of who you are, you're confident, you're relaxed, you can communicate, and you can connect uh, with another person. In this case, guys, we're talking about 
building intimate, honest relationships with women, because that's deep down what everyone wants. Uh, some people might not admit that, and that's fine. That's fear showing up again. Uh, fear causes sometimes denial, not admitting what you really want, but it's a great thing when you have it. So that's another story. I hope you get a lot from this, and the tips uh, I explained in, in this video, communicating, working through it, being patient, learning to relax, and, and obviously, if you want to do it quicker, work on your life. The quickest way to build confidence of women is to face your fears in your life. Whatever your fears are, every time you face a fear, you grow in confidence, you grow in self-esteem. You have that sense that I'm good enough. You, you go into situations feeling good about yourself, all right? So if you enjoyed this video, like, share. Any questions, if you want to share your experiences, let me know. And as always, if you want to get coaching in this area of anxiety, social anxiety, with women, with people, confidence, all in this kind of area, get in touch. My email is below, um, all, underneath all the videos, and I'll get back to you and I'll see if I can work with you. As I've always said, right, I don't work with everyone and I don't coach anyone because not everyone is, is workable or coachable. I tried that at the start. So you've got to be the right person. So if I can't work with you, it's not personal. I'm not rejecting you, but I'm also saying that I won't be able to help you. You have to find someone that will help you. But the likelihood is if you follow me and you like my values and you like my message and, 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 and it feels right, then we'll work together and I can help you, all right? So I'll speak to you guys soon. I appreciate the support. Remember, fearless.